In order to make the fuel, you're going to need a few things. A spatula, a pan, an electric burner, a half inch coring rod, and something to hold the fuel molds. I just have a 2x4 with some holes drilled into it. Then you're going to need some molds for your grains. These are the exact same pipe that the rocket engine is made out of, cut into two and a half inch long pieces. You're also going to want some aluminum foil to keep the rocket candy from sticking to anything. Next, you're going to want four toilet paper cardboard tubes. And with a scissor, cut each one of those lengthwise. And after doing that, cut about a half inch drip off of the toilet paper roll. Then roll it up and stick it in each of the molds. And make sure the bottom is flat because you don't want the rocket candy to stick to the steel conduit. Then with a pen, Mark where the top of the mold is on the cardboard tube. And just cut off the excess material. And then stick it back in the mold. Okay, so now we're ready to start making the fuel, and I'm going to go look in my notebook for the recipe that I use. Which is a 50-50 mix of powdered and granulated potassium nitrate, powdered sugar, and an additional 2% iron oxide. I melt it at around high heat, and the composition is 63% KNO3 and 37% sugar. So, we've got our regular potassium nitrate, our powdered potassium nitrate, our powdered sugar, iron oxide, and then a scale to measure that all out with. Then we'll want a measuring cup and a spoon and then something to mix all the chemicals together with. According to my notes, a 2.5 inch base grain with a half inch core will require 75 grams of rocket candy, but I'm going to bump that up to 80 grams. And here's the breakdown. 202 grams of potassium nitrate, 118 grams of sugar, and 6.5 grams of iron oxide. So we're going to start with the potassium nitrate. Starting with the powdered potassium nitrate first. Do 101 grams of that and then 101 grams of the regular KNO3 for a total of 202 grams. Then you can go ahead and dump that into the mixing container. Then we're going to measure out the 118 grams of powdered sugar and you can dump that in the container as well. Then just six and a half grams of iron oxide. Doesn't take much. And you can throw that in the container and you're ready to mix it up. So go ahead and shake it around. Make sure all those chemicals are mixed thoroughly. And now we're ready to cook. So this is everything you're going to need. First go ahead and put your molds in the 2x4 or just set them on some cardboard or whatever you want to do. But setting them on aluminum foil keeps the mold from sticking to anything. Alright next we're going to Put some aluminum foil on our coring tool. So we're going to fold over the end and just roll it up. Each time you make a new grain, you'll want to redo this. 
because it usually breaks the tin foil when you get the coring tool out. Turn your heat on to high and let your pan warm up while you measure out 80 grams of rocket candy. And go ahead and pour it in. I like to make sure there's no big clumps of potassium nitrate or sugar, make sure everything's nice and thoroughly mixed together. And once the heat starts melting your sugar, it doesn't take long. So you want to keep stirring until you get a nice liquidy, kind of shiny, melted fuel. When it gets to that point, you don't want to wait long. So go ahead and pour that into your mold. And you don't want too much in there, so get rid of any excess fuel. And then insert your coring tool. With my setup, I just punch it through the aluminum foil in the bottom into a small hole and then I let it sit until it hardens. After that you take it out of the mold and you hit it on the ground to remove the coring tool. Now you just need to do this three more times to make your four grains of fuel. Now usually I have a little bit more that I need to drill away because the coring tool is slightly tapered. I use a 3 8 inch bit to finish widening up that hole. And if your rocket candy grains are too long for your rocket engine, meaning they're more than 10 inches long in overall length, I like to just trim up a little bit of excess cardboard until they fit. Then you want to take one rocket candy grain and seal up one end of its core. That way when you make the end cap no water can get down into the fuel and ruin it. So now you can go ahead and start dropping down your rocket candy grains. I'm using the same steel rod I used before in making the nozzle to push them down. If they're a little bit tight, they might be. Now that they're in, you can punch in those little sections of metal you cut earlier. And this is going to anchor in that end cap. And we're going to do the same process as the nozzle. You're just going to use electric tape to cover up those holes. Make sure no water or cement comes out of them. And you can mix up your cement. I usually make it a little thicker than the nozzle cement. And then drop it into the top of the rocket engine. Definitely make sure to jiggle it around. You don't want air bubbles in this end cap. Make sure to leave enough space for a washer underneath the bolt. The washer is for added strength. Then let the end cap dry. I usually give it at least 24 hours. Once the cement has dried, use a caulking gun and Loctite sealant to fill up the end cap. Then use a popsicle stick or something else to flatten off the sealant. And after that, just let that dry for a couple days.